I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm bored. Chase, chase, chase. You get it now! Hello everybody, Jonathan here, and welcome to the debut of a new series I'm making in collaboration with Not Too Underscore. His channel will be in the description below, so be sure to go check it out after this video. Now, for this series, we're going to be having a bunch of gimmicky themed Pokemon battles on the battle simulation Pokemon Showdown. In anticipation of the new games, Pokemon Sun and Moon, we decided that the first week we'd kick it off by having Sun and Moon themed team. I will be using the Moon themed team, and for example of this, most of my Pokemon evolve by either using a Moonstone on them or by leveling up during the night. However, we were both allowed to have one Pokemon that was getting an Alola form in Generation 7. So without further ado, let's start the battle. So I decided to lead off with my Lunatone, hoping to get off an early Stealth Rock. However, I knew that his Espeon was going to be uh, Magic Coat, so I couldn't set up against it. I went to see how much damage I would deal, and it was less than ideal. I switched to Lunar Doge, my uh, Umbreon, to force him to switch. He sent out the Whimscot, which effectively countered my uh, Umbreon, so I switched him out, going into Legend, my Ninetales, obviously for the Fire Stab. I was expecting him to switch out again, but he stayed in, and I'm not really sure why. He got the Toxic off and had Protect, so this is definitely would have been a problem, Whimscot, with the Protect and Leech Seed Toxic combo. And he went for the Cotton Guard there, which I'm really not sure what that was all about, considering I was a special fire attacker. But that's, you know, one Pokemon down. Now I went into Dreamer to heal uh, the Toxic off of Legend. But he gets the stat boost from Ancient Power, and that was kind of scary. I decided to send in uh, Umbreon to try and take that out before he did anything with it, and then the Mega Lucario came out and I was really scared at this point. Sent out Gilly because he's my physical wall, but um, wasn't actually expecting him to take hits. I got... I, was, I actually did a lot more damage to that Earthquake than I thought I was going to. But here you see me just trying to stall, get as much health I, as I can in between his, his hits. He hit me with a power-up punch, uh, which let me live one turn. Now, this, this Clefairy is super gimmicky, like, uh, I know Clefairy's like, oh you, and I'm gonna actually add a helpful Pokemon, but like, he can't have a Clefairy without Metronome. Didn't get to use it, cause you know, Mega Lucario, but it worked out. It was a special wall, so I figured, uh, you know, have counter and sash on it. Now right there, what he just did, just, aw, uh, that was just insane. That predict was perfect. I was trying to get out the Stealth Rocks on his side of the field. He knew I was what I was trying to do. He switched to the Espeon to try and counter it, and it just was beautiful. He took care of... He avoided getting Stealth Rocks on his side of the field, and he effectively put them on mine. That was... That was nice. So I got, uh... So my Umbreon got burned. I'm not too worried about that, because... I'm not really dealing, uh, he's not a physical sweeper, so I don't have to worry about the cripple, and I can easily out-sustain the burn, plus I have the, uh, heal bell on Dreamer. I switched off from him just so I can try and get the Stealth Rocks out since, uh, since Lunatone resists fire and his, uh, Espeon just switched out. I was hoping to survive there to get a Earth Power and hopefully take out the Ninetales while keeping Lunatone alive, allowing me to pain split whatever came out next. So here I switch back to Dreamer to try and get the Heal Bell off, seeing as how I... Dreamer's a special wall, so Heliolisk probably won't be able to do much damage against it. The Espeon comes back out, and I'm assuming that the Espeon is going to start bulking up again. So I go for the heal bell, and then I want to switch out before I hit, uh, get hit by a strong shadow ball. I tried hitting him with the shot, side shot, because I'm pretty sure Espeon is a lower defense than special defense. That didn't work out too well, so I go ahead and switch out, send back out my Umbreon, because it's the best thing that can deal with his Espeon. 
I use Snarl against the Espeon because it's a good counter to Calm Mind. It doesn't help with the special defense, but it at least makes a special attack weaken and as a tank, you know, lowering your opponent's attack can help you. Sends out the Ninetales, which is now very weak because of the Stealth Rock, so Snarl is able to take it out. Now that it's sunny, his Heliolisk will be taking damage every turn from uh, Dry Skin. That in combination of uh, Snarl for the lower special attack, it can pretty much shrug off all of his attacks. Just gonna protect this turn because he'll die next turn regardless of what happens. If he switches, he'll switch back in eventually and just die from Stealth Rocks. Sends out the Lunatone and that had me laughing so hard. If he had done that a little bit earlier when my Umbreon was on lower health, then that could have really turned the battle because I feel as though this Espeon could have sweeped most of my other Pokemon. So I really lucked out there. Like, the, I was not expecting Explosion. Like, whoever expects Explosion? That was just awesome. That's why I love battles like this. So here, we're just, you know, trying to out-sustain each other, kill each other slowly. He's trying to bulk up again. Uh, I'm using Foul Play. Not sure why, but I don't know. <laughs> Guess because the special defense Snarl wasn't doing much damage. He can't really do anything to me, though, because I'm pretty sure his best attack was Shadow Ball. Well, that's the end of the battle, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, tune in next week for Red vs. Blue. This, this team top actually looks pretty good. Oh, wait, wait.